Hello everyone, my name is Anton and in this video I want to talk about mind mapping and obsidian. There's a few different ways we can do mind mapping with an obsidian and let's hop into it. So the first way is going to be leveraging the canvas and you could start off from more of a brainstorming type um, approach to where you're just dumping a bunch of stuff on the actual canvas and then you're mapping things between different ideas, maybe uh, rewording things and then making those different connections and starting off this way. But I want to talk more about the traditional way of doing the mind mapping where you start off with a central idea and then you start branching off of that particular idea into um, you know other external ideas that kind of wrap around that central idea. And you can still do this with the canvas uh, but it's not as great. I haven't found a, a, a plugin that does the mind mapping like you would traditionally do it in a dedicated app, say like my, um, Xmind. So my Ma Xmind is a great application out there for mind mapping. It's dedicated to doing mind maps and it provides a lot of functionality. Even the free version of Xmind is pretty good. So if you don't find what you need in Obsidian, this would be my recommendation as a go-to. And it supports multiple operating systems. So it should work on pretty much any operating system that you have. But let's go ahead and stick with Obsidian and see what kind of functionality we get. Now on the canvas, as I mentioned, you can do mind mapping here where you start from a main idea. You see, I put one here and the plugin that I'm using here is the canvas mind map where what it does is just gives you some functionality where you can create uh, hotkeys to help you create different nodes on the, on your mind map. And you know, if right here I have this main idea, I have a couple ideas or thing one, thing two and three branching off of it. If I wanted to add more, I can use a keyboard shortcut to create another. And we can go here and then I can create more of those going down pretty easy. Then I can also create child nodes. There are sibling nodes that come off of uh, these particular nodes here. Now, one thing you can notice is that this node here is sitting right on top of another one. So it doesn't quite do a great job at keeping the nodes, you know, away from each other or within certain distance and organized. So that's one thing you're going to have to kind of deal with when you're using the canvas and the plugins on the canvas. There is a lot more of you having to kind of come onto the canvas and move things around. Also with a typical or traditional mind mapping application, these nodes would uh, typically try to even themselves out around on both sides of the main idea. And here, if I try to move this over to the other side, a dedicated mind mapping app would actually move this arrow that's linked to this right side to the left and kind of shift things over that's connected to this node to this other side and we can see we don't have that functionality here. So there's a bit more manual work that you have to do if you're going to do mind mapping, leveraging the canvas in Obsidian, but we'll take a look at a couple other different ones here. Now there's also, also the mind map uh, plugin, which I have it set up here where I've created a mind map. And this looks more like a traditional mind mapping application where you have your canvas here or your uh, mind mapping board and you have the central idea and then you have all the level one ideas around it and you can branch kind of off of these different nodes so if i was to let's go ahead and shrink this down a bit create another node by hitting the plus we can see you create another node there create another node here and if i want to move one of these to the other side we can see how this comes over to this other side. If I create another one here, let's do this, move this to the side. You can see how everything from this node moves over and it balances itself out. Where on the canvas, we saw that this does not work the same. So this is a, 
a good uh, way of doing mind mapping with an obsidian just using the mind map plugin and yeah from there you have the basic functionality that you would mo more than likely need from a mind mapping application one of the uh, things i did notice with this plugin here is that you can come in here and let's say i want to centralize this or bring everything in the mind map into the the view that works fairly well if i say move this over i can bring you know this to center if i select this one let's see if it centers it no it does not do that okay so it just cent cent uh, centers the entire map here without expanding it to the full width of the canvas like this one here does and then you can also download an image here so if i click that download image and i did notice that it takes a long time for the dialogue to come up for you to give it a name and then save it to a png file but you can get an image in here and have it downloaded and you will get everything within your mind map we go into the settings this is the mind map plugin here you do have some settings where you can set the background you can set the clarity of the the export for the image that you do there and then some other buttons that you can enable or, or disable on the mind map um, and a few other spacing or sizing for your nodes um, here on the mind map so there are some things that you can come in here and configure with this particular plugin Moving on to the next one is the mind map next gen. And I'm not sure, too sure what's next gen about this, but let's go through the functionality. The functionality for this one here is you are basically setting up a, a hierarchy or you know a tree structure that the mind map or the plugin will use to create the mind map. Now I copied one in here that just shows the the actual main idea and then a couple other ideas in here and you can see this is in bullet format where i can come in here and i can collapse these nodes myself leveraging you know uh, just the obsidian and you know its functionality for being able to collapse and expand the different uh, bullet bullet points or headings now if we want to transform this this uh, bullet list into a mind map. We'll go ahead and open up the command here and let's do open pen mind map. And we can see here that the view of the mind map is exactly what we have up top. It just took this tree structure or bullet point structure and created a mind map out of it. The functionality that you have within this view is that you can expand and collapse. But that is pretty much it. You cannot create any nodes from here like you could with the mind map plugin that we, we have here on this one here where you have a plus button and you can add additional nodes to the mind map. The only way you can add a node to this mind map using this plugin is by adding again another branch um, or bullet point from within the markdown or the note that you have here. So we can see it created one. So this one's mostly just a view only type of mind mapping uh, solution here. And yeah, again, that's I'm not too sure what's next gen about it, but it does a good job with viewing or uh, visualizing the, the structure that you have in your, your markdown note into a mind map, but that's all it really gives you. The next one I'm going to show here is the enhancing mind map. And this is the one that I actually use most often, especially with, within Obsidian. So if I go outside of Obsidian, again, I like to use XMind. I have used some other ones previously, but I'm trying to keep everything within Obsidian. So if I'm searching for information, everything's within this particular vault and yeah, it's easier, much easier to find that way instead of trying to hunt down where everything is 
when they're scattered around in different applications. So let's go ahead and take this particular structure here because this one works similarly to the mind map next gen, but we'll see that it actually has much more functionality than this one does. We'll go ahead and delete that bottom area. We will go ahead and paste in this structure here. And one additional thing you need to do with this particular plugin is add in some metadata here so that it knows that we're this file is using the plugin. So we'll come in here and we'll add in the metadata mind map dash plugin and basic. All right, so we'll change from source back to live view and we will see that it automatically created the mind map for us. Now, one difference between the other mind map that I had shown before is that on this mind map, you get a plus and a delete option here on this mind map. So it transformed that markdown into a mind map, but you can also come from the mind map view and you can add additional nodes to it. So I got a, an additional one there. I can collapse them if I want to add and go off there, add in another one. So you can easily add these nodes to the mind map from this particular view. What you can also do and what I do in many cases is I will come in here and I will open up another pane on here and then I will change one of them to markdown. That way I can come into the markdown file and I can edit the markdown file. And while I'm editing the markdown file, I can also get the view of what that mind map will look like in the mind map um, view of this particular file. So you have both ways of doing this. So if I was to come in here and say add another sub item to this here, we can see that it updates the mind map and doing it this way is pretty good because what I can do is I can start from say um, a, an external file outside of this and then I can drag in information pretty easy or what I could do is I can even come in here and let's say I want to leverage AI and say Give, let's see what we're going to do. Give me some areas of focus for business in bullet format. Okay, so it gave me these in bullet format. And what I can do here is I can say, these are uh, business focuses, business focus. And then I can give this a heading. So give that a heading too, similar to these here. And it created another branch here on the mind map with those particular items. So if I need to leverage the, you know, AI or again, drag and drop information from another place, I can easily do that within the markdown format of the file and then have it view or show the mind map, you know, in its view as well. So you get the best of both worlds, I think here. You can also, in many of these here, you can come in here and you can edit these and you can add in, say like if you want to do emojis and add emojis in here, you can do that. So emojis are supported. Let me see here if we got here, let's look for a briefcase. There we go. For business, I've added two, too many. But you can come in here, you can add emojis in there. So you can get somewhat close to what you might do here in a XMind type of mind mapping application that's dedicated to doing this, you can get pretty close to what you would get on those other ones. You don't have certain functionality like uh, com leaving comments or notes um, the same way you would over here. And some of the 
you know, uh, references can't be shown these arrows here from the, the, the other mind mapping app. But if you don't need any of those and you just need something pretty simple, straightforward to show your idea and the different branches from them, then I think the enhanced mind map plugin is a fairly good one for Obsidian. Okay, so that is it for this, this video. If you like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time, have a nice day.